Well, welcome back, everyone. You're taking a live look at the historic French Quarter, an absolutely gorgeous day for the fifth annual New Year's Eve All-State Sugar Bowl Parade. There are thousands of fans right now from Baylor, Georgia, around the rest of the country and the rest of the world that are here for New Year's Eve, enjoying our amazing city right now. What a great day in New Orleans. And we are so honored to be able to bring this parade to you live here on WDSU. Thank you for joining us for our broadcast of this wonderful event. I'm Randy Russo alongside Fletcher Mackle, Mark Romig with the Sugar Bowl Committee, also our tourism aficionado here. Uh, he knows everything about New Orleans and of course tourism here. So certainly so nice to have this back for the fifth year. Oh, so wonderful. And we can't have a better partner than Allstate. They have been just fantastic, as Pam said, 14 years and uh, they have brought so much to the Sugar Bowl Committee, but also to the city of New Orleans and what they have been able to invest here. Yeah, and the parade right now is going on, so we want to get you back out to the French Quarter. WDSU reporter Aubrey Killian, I believe, is standing by with one of the men who makes this parade possible. Aubrey? That's right, so we've got Barry Kern joining us live right now in the middle of the action. There's actually a float that's going to stop by any second now. Tell me, what is it like seeing it in the moment? I know there's so much work that goes into this that people forget. Well, I just keep thinking about all these people from out of town. First of all, we got an incredible day today. The weather's awesome, but you know, as New Orleanians, we take great parades, you know, for granted. And for all these folks from out of town, seeing a parade like this on a beautiful day like this before the Sugar Bowl, you know, it's a great ad for our city, shows them what we're all about, but also when you think that next week is the beginning of Carnival, come Monday, January 6th is wow. King's Day, so it's a great opening, and Sugar Bowl does such a great job in bringing this parade. Because again, remember, these folks, they don't see anything like this where they're from or any other bowl game for that matter. The hours that you and your staff must work, I can only imagine, like you mentioned, Mardi Gras right around the corner, are people pulling overnight shifts every night? How does this all happen? Well, this is kind of a warm up for that. You know, we got some of the equipment out. We got the folks out. This is just a little bit of warm up teaser for what we're getting ready for, which we're looking forward to a great year. But it's so wonderful to be here in the moment of Sugar Bowl to have Georgia back, Baylor. All these people are having an incredible time. I mean, that's what's so fun about it. And you can almost feel the energy out here. Oh, absolutely. No, it's I mean, the weather's awesome, but the people are having a great time. Question of great time. Well, Mr. Kern, we appreciate your time. Keep great. up Thank the great work. So again, a lot of people out here, like Mr. Kern just mentioned, the weather's great, the crowds are great, the parade's great. So you can't really ask for much better, really, with anything with this parade. So again, we're going to keep you posted on all of the great things that are happening out here. And once the next float does kind of pass on by, guys, back to you. All right, Aubrey Gillian, having so much fun there. He's got a really great assignment today. Uh, you're taking a look at the dance stylings there of Pat's School of Dance out of Henderson, North Carolina. They have 115 members. Pat Shepard, the director there, owning it for nearly 50 years. They've taken part in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, also um, involved in the remake of Dirty Dancing a few years ago. And that's right, the original and the remake of Dirty Dancing. And while the the parade has stalled a little bit, not stalled, there it goes, it's going again. We are now looking at the Walk-On's Bistro and Bar Float, one of the great success stories of Louisiana. These guys started, of course, in Baton Rouge. They are now all over the country with sports bars. Drew Brees is one of the owners. It started because of two former Walk-On basketball players at LSU just had this crazy idea and it has flourished here in Louisiana. There they are on top of their float, the Walk-On's Bistro and Bar Float rolling down Decatur Street right now. And of course, many businesses like Walk-On's are gonna be very busy both today, tomorrow, uh, the next few days and few weeks. So, so talk about that economic impact again for First Mark, especially when it comes to these local businesses and local entities here. Yeah, in Randy, the footprint that an event like this has on our local retail and the hospitality industry uh, is just tremendous. And as you see it happening, uh, this weather is working in our favor. We have a lot of people walking around town, up Magazine Street into the Bywater, into Mid City and Lakeview, and they're spending money and they're uh, leaving uh, a good imprint that will have an economic impact for many, many years. What does it mean to you to know that obviously the French Quarter is the lifeblood of tourism, but you just mentioned the Marigny and the Bywater, obviously the Garden District. People have always 
flock to the Garden District, but so many other parts of our city post Katrina is where people want to go, Frenchman Street, in different areas. How great is that, that they can explore so many parts of our city and they can walk and do it all? Well, we did that aha moment. We realized that New Orleans is such a, a wonderful city of neighborhoods, and we needed to um, help people understand that there's more to the city than just what you would consider to be the traditional tourism areas. And we want to give attention to the French Quarter and the downtown area, but other areas of the city from a fairness standpoint deserve to get some of the business spending. So we've been pushing the message out that there are these other great areas for people to explore. Uh, and that has been our mantra for the last several years. We started with the Follow Your NOLA campaign uh, and we've proceeded on with, um, you know, leave with a story where you can really discover the elegant grid of New Orleans all over the city. Well, right now you're looking at the Vicksburg High School Band from Vicksburg, Michigan. 127 members strong here. They're expected to play Little Liza Jane or, or Hush Force, one of those, those two. Um, an interesting fact here that the band actually played in the Sugar Bowl before, uh, back in 2010, not just performing, but also doing some community service here. So we love the fact that people also want to give back in the midst of these wonderful performances. Hey, that's right. I'm not sure if they're going to be playing or if they're doing some cardio here because they are moving at the speed and of a light right now. And it looks like I, they got a little bit of a dance as well. I was going to say, I know this is a short parade, but take it easy, Vicksburg. You got out of the cold weather in Michigan <laughs> and you're enjoying the warm weather here in New Orleans. There's no rush to go back to Michigan right now. Um, but yes, again, the Vicksburg, not Mississippi Vicksburg, the Vicksburg, Michigan High School Marching Band. I think they're getting in line if they actually start playing. We are going to listen to them in just one second because they are very excited. Again, their first time back playing in the Sugar Bowl since 2010. Here is a look at the Children's Hospital Circus Train Float by Kern Studios. Uh, members of Children's Hospital on this float. And Aubrey Killian has a representative from Children's Hospital standing by talking about what this means for them. Aubrey. It is right. You cannot beat this timing. We've got the head of Children's Hospital, Matt Schaefer, joining us live. Your float behind us as we speak. Yeah, a bunch of my colleagues up there for taking in the event today, a beautiful day to welcome Georgia Bulldogs, Baylor Bears here to New Orleans. And you've yet to catch any beads. We, we've got to get you a bead. <laughs> I, I've yet to catch any, but I've dodged a lot, which is important. <laughs> Touch on the energy right now. There's so many people. It's exciting. Why does Children's have to be a part of this every year? Well, you think about the Sugar Bowl. It has a history here since 1935, part of the community. Children's part of the community since 1955. So what better way for us, Children's, to support the tradition here in New Orleans, which is all about community, all about events and enjoying that community and children's just happen to be a part of it. And what's the most exciting thing you've seen so far? The bands, there are, I feel like it's almost like Mardi Gras Day out here. <laughs> touch, touch on how exciting it is. It is a little bit like Mardi Gras Day and I think the excitement is just being able to be a fabric in the community. And you know, yesterday, probably the best part for us in this whole deal was having some of the Baylor Bear football team visit the kids in the hospital, which was amazing for our patients and families. And I know there's so many kids that go through a lot out there. Touch on how exciting that is. And then take me to that moment when they see the players and get to meet them. Well, a moment yesterday, we introduced the Baylor Bear football team to a second line. Never seen that before. They second line into the hospital and they see, you know, guys who are vibrant, who are energetic, happy to be there and happy to engage with them at their level, which is part of what children's hospitals are about. Well, Matt, we appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. So a lot of people excited. Some more bands are coming. We'll keep you posted on all the bands that are coming right after the break on this awesome coverage.
Well, right now you're taking a look at the Franklin High School Band from Franklin, North Carolina. They've got 70 members, band director here, Buddy Huckabee, and they are expected to play dancing in New Orleans, and they are dancing. Uh, right there in front. They are having a fabulous time. They are known as the Marching Panther Regiment. Mark, let me ask you this. Obviously, we're joined with Mark Romig from the Sugar Bowl Committee, tourism official here in New Orleans. When high schools and colleges get to come down, how special is that? You've covered tourism for so long, not just Mardi Gras, but an event like this that you get to perform in an iconic city, in an iconic neighborhood. When, when you deal with the Sugar Bowl and you all invite these people to come down, how excited are they to know they're gonna be part of something like the Sugar Bowl? Uh, this is very special. I mean, this is creating memories for these uh, young people that will last a, a lifetime. And, and there, it's planned throughout the entire year that they're gonna come down here. Much like when a band is gonna perform at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. This is a goal that they, uh, they have. Um, they travel well, they have their chaperones, they come here, they're enjoying the city, and they're showing off what they do best, and that is to perform and, and to uh, exhibit their spirit. So it's very special. And when they come down here, of course, it's an additional economic impact for the city because they're staying in the hotels, they're, they're going out to dinner, uh, and they're buying souvenirs, which is also important. Let's take a listen to them for a moment because, of course, we want to hear what they do best. the swingers there that are, are leading the way. They're doing a phenomenal job, and it takes a lot to, to dance and march at the same time. Very exciting. And, and let me just say this. I'm not trying to, like, just pat you on the back here. Randy Russo is quite the dancer, so <laughs> I, I can tell you right now, those swing dancers definitely have, you know, some competition if she got out there uh, with you them would, you have, I have a signature gumbo dance <laughs> that if you're ever... I guess able to see you you will get to see exactly what I have to offer. <laughs> I would say you are a fun dancer and that is the most important thing about dancing. Mark, speaking of fun, New Orleans is a fun city. New Orleans is a great city. As a sports journalist here at WDSU, I get to travel around with the Saints and the Pelicans and LSU. And I always love hearing journalists talk about how much they love coming to New Orleans. I know Rachel Nichols with ESPN says it's her favorite NBA city. When we have people come in to cover the Saints games from the NFL Network and the different networks, they love it. Can you just talk about the spotlight that is going to be shined on our city, not only with the Sugar Bowl tomorrow night, but the national championship game with LSU in Clemson, what that means for our city from a tourism standpoint, from an economic standpoint. It's just advertising like this. People watching right now seeing this beautiful imagery of our city that you just can't put a price tag on. And is that fair is, to say? It's very, very fair to say. In fact, uh, it is an amazing homage to the city when the anchors and the sportscasters and then the news reporters are talking about where they just went to dinner and where they plan to go to dinner when the game is over with and, and what did they have for breakfast yesterday and what are they going to have for lunch um, and we're not talking about uh, things that will just go away people are going to be talking about this forever these people become ambassadors for new orleans and we also have the saints playing into the playoffs and so you'll have that national news story in fact it's an international news story so you'll have to be in the spotlight uh, for the next several weeks uh, in New Orleans is really fortunate. And not only New Orleans, but all of Louisiana. Right now you're looking at the uh, J, Col uh, J Collection Hotels float, the uh, streetcar float that we typically see sometimes uh, during carnival season and some of the other uh, parades. And of course, as you mentioned, with the Saints getting ready to play in, in the next couple of weeks, Mark, you know, we are going to be seeing more national teams and also um, more national visitors coming here. That's right. You're looking at the Mary Antoinette's, one of the sub crews, if you will. That's one of the things that I love about Carnival. The the rolling Elvi and all these different sub crews, the Mary Antoinette's are part of the J Collection streetcar float that you see right now. We're going to continue to take a peek at the parade here, but we also want to talk about the game tomorrow night because that is why so many of these people are here. Baylor versus Georgia, the Bulldogs out of the SEC versus the Bears out of the Big 12. When the 86 Sugar Bowl kicks off on Wednesday evening, it'll be the resurgent Baylor Bears taking on perennial power Georgia. Matt Rule is the head coach at Baylor. In his first year, following an awful scandal in Waco, his program went just 1-11. Last year, they improved to 7-6, but this year, 
He has his team flying high. They are 11-2 overall and excited to be in New Orleans. We're blue-collar, tough, competitive team, so our team will be beyond motivated. And we have to be because this is such a great team we're facing. And I'm motivated. I mean, I, I've never really met Coach Smart, but I certainly respect him. And so a chance to go against him as a head coach, I mean, I, uh, I, have, to be, I have to be at my best. And so I, I think our guys are highly, highly motivated. Got a lot of respect for Baylor. The job that Coach Rule's been able to do in such a short amount of time is remarkable. And the more you delve into watching them, you see his personality traits, his coaching staff's personality traits on his team. They are extremely competitive. They're extremely tough. Um, you think about every game they've played in, they've been in a lot of tight ball games. But I got a lot of respect for the way they play. Um, they got an unbelievable defensive unit. You know, their quarterback's healthy and back. And uh, obviously have played Oklahoma tooth and nail down to two, five, two you know, fourth quarter games. We've got a lot of respect for them, and uh, we'll have our work cut out for us as we have preparing for them. Extremely excited to take on Georgia, a tremendous team, and a landmark opportunity for us coming to the Sugar Bowl. And uh, um, as I've said, it's a tremendous opportunity for our team, but really for, you know, for all of us personally. Um, we've worked very hard to get here, and so we're excited to play in the game. And we certainly hope that we'll uh, represent not only ourselves, but our university and, and the game itself. Uh, by playing uh, a great football uh, game with tremendous class and uh, hope we can play really well. So, Yeah, Matt Rule is a great coach. He may jump to the NFL and be the next head coach of the New York Giants and the Car or the Carolina Panthers. He's interviewing with both of those franchises. What he's done at Baylor is remarkable. He's a, he's a culture builder, if you will. He did it at Temple. Now he's done it at Baylor as well. Best of luck to the Bears. Georgia, a heavy favorite, though, in the game on Wednesday night. All right, well, here are some of the ladies and gentlemen with the Alice Hart Marching Band from here in New Orleans on the West Bank of Algiers, one of our two local bands here, Abramson High School Marching Band, performed a little earlier, but let's take a listen to Alice Hart. Getting ready for uh, carnival season because we're going to be working hard coming up in the next couple of months. Of course, Alice Hart Marching Band there from Algiers. Algiers wrapping up their 300th uh, celebration here. Their tricentennial celebration will come to an end uh, today. Algiers, a year after New Orleans was uh, officially founded. Sure, and Mark, obviously you were such an integral part of that 300th anniversary, the tricentennial celebration of our city. How much did that play into us getting events like WrestleMania and some of the big events? Because we have another big run of mainstream events coming to the city. Obviously, the College Football National Championship, the Women's Final Four this year. We have a Men's Final Four coming up and a Super Bowl again. Is it all tied in? Does, does the 300th anniversary, did the 300th anniversary kind of weigh into that? People saying, hey, don't forget about New Orleans. And we are now hitting that cycle of mainstream, big ticket sporting events again. Yeah, Fletcher, it certainly um, reminded people of the resilience of New Orleans and how much New Orleans means to so many people around the world and the significance that this city has meant for so many years. And why not place these major events in the city of New Orleans? Because you know people are going to come here. In fact, about 65% of the people that visit New Orleans are repeat visitors. And that speaks very highly of all the things that we can offer and the fact that it's such a walkable city. And 300 years gave us an opportunity to remind people how special the city is. And of course, we have Mardi Gras. We do it like no one else. <laughs> like no one else. And this is the uh, Mardi Gras World Float, uh, where you've got members of the Kern Studios there riding on board. Yeah, obviously the Kern family has done a, well, I, I've used the term woven into the fabric of the city to, to talk about Judge Morial. I, I don't know if there's anybody woven yeah. into the fabric of Carnival more than the Kern family. You obviously heard from Barry Kern during his interview with Aubrey and obviously <laughs> visiting Mardi Gras World. I love when they have parties there and I love taking people there that are from out of town because for us, Growing up here, this is normal for us. Right. But when people come and visit to see these floats and to see the pageantry of it all, I didn't realize the tourism attraction that Mardi Gras World was because I just feel like this yeah. is normal. But for so many people, it's such a great event.
event and a great venue to go and to. And for those of you who don't know what Mardi Gras World is, you actually get to watch some of these Kern Studio artists at work putting together some of these ornate details that will go on to these carnival floats that we celebrate so often um, each and every year. And they've exported this artwork all over the world. Uh, the, the Kern name is known throughout the capitals of, uh, of the world for this great work and they, they bring it to all these other cities around the world. Uh, very special, very special. All right, and coming up here in just a second, I keep getting thrown. We saw Vicksburg from Vicksburg, Michigan. <laughs> now we see the Spring Hill High School. I I'm thinking Spring Hill College from Mobile, a great Jesuit university just two hours away in Mobile. But this is the Spring Hill High School marching band from Spring Hill, Kansas, 82 members strong. The band director is Dan Wooge. They're expected to perform F squared or the school's fight song. I think we're going to take a listen to them as they get a little closer, but the Spring Hill High School Marching Band from Spring Hill, Kansas. Quickly, you know, one of the big things that you guys have been doing, volunteerism, working in the community, you have been working really hard at Joe Brown Park with the Sugar Bowl Committee. Right, we committed uh, several millions of dollars to help bring that park back, and it's so important to the New Orleans East area. So working with a number of organizations, we helped bring Joe Brown Park back, and it's a, it's a great location. Upcoming next, we've got the River City Venues, New Orleans premier party and event venues float waiting in the wings to travel down the streets here of the French Quarter, followed by the Athens High School Band, which has 81 members, the band director there, Stephen Porter. So still a couple of a uh, couple of yeah, attractions for us to see before this parade wraps up. That's right. And we have about a minute left in our parade coverage before the WDSU News at 4 starts. So if you're watching online right now, Athens High School from Athens, Alabama, you can watch on WDSU.com or any of our WDSU social media apps, the Facebook page specifically, because the parade is wrapping up, but we are going to end before the parade actually ends. And we thank you so much for, for joining us, both uh, the locals who are watching at home and, of course, many of the families who are watching from all over the country getting to celebrate um, their young students here, getting the chance of this opportunity to march in the Sugar Bowl Parade. Mark, thank you so much for being with us this well, My morning. pleasure, and Happy New Year to both of you. Happy New Year, guys. Thanks for watching WDSU's presentation of the All-State Sugar Bowl New Year's Eve Parade.